Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, my name is Melissa, and this is my channel Geeky Witch about all things cross-stitch in my life. It is Monday, April, what day is it today? The 18th, 2022. Uh, I am doing part two of my Stitch Mania, or Whip Mania, selections that uh, my friends have picked for me for all of my chaotic stitching next month. So, it bit of a recap from yesterday if you didn't see part one of this. Um, you don't need to because, you know, it, this doesn't need to be in order, but if you want to do it in order, just pop back one episode, episode 50, and you'll get the whole spiel. Um, but basically, every year for Stitch Mania, for the past several years, I have put all of my stitching together in one big long Excel list, and then I tell my friends, pick a number between one and X. Um, each number corresponds with one of the pieces on my whip list chart, and that is the piece that I will be stitching at some point during Stitch Mania in May. Uh, it has had some comical results in years past, which I went into last episode, and this year I decided instead of just kind of having the big group of projects and then grabbing out of a pile, I actually assigned them in order of how they were picked for the days that I'm going to stitch on these. And as I mentioned yesterday, um, I have left myself a little bit over a week at the end so that if I miss any days in here, there'll be makeups down at the end of May. Uh, for example, I know the 22nd is probably going to wind up being a makeup because I have a long drive from Pennsylvania and a um, baby shower that day. So I seriously doubt I'm getting any stitching done that day. I figure, hey, mix it up, challenge myself a little bit, have a good time, say hello to projects that I haven't stitched on in a while. I, I consider um, Stitch Mania and... Uh, one of those things that, you know, it allows me to get into the projects that I haven't touched in a while and see how I'm feeling about them and see if I need to bring anything up a little bit higher in my priority queue because the ideas that I have back, you know, December, beginning of January, they can change by May depending on just how I'm feeling or maybe I'm finding my interests are going in a different direction. You know, and I just, I need to take a break from this and I want to try something new. This year, for example, I've been having a rut. I've just been struggling a little bit with the things that I wanted to stitch. And clearly I just kind of need to take a step back and rehash what I have and see what's grabbing my fancy. And we'll go from there and kind of plan the rest of the year. So, uh, that... That's the quick rundown. <laughs> um, so yesterday I showed days one through 11 of my choices. I decided to do 22 projects in 2022. So today I'm gonna show you the other 11 projects. And then after that, I'm going to show you how I organize this insanity for Stitch Mania and honestly for all of my stitching because I've kept a pretty steady organ organ bleh, organizational there we go that's how many syllables that has uh, <laughs> method for years um it works well for me and i know it's not for everybody but it just helps me feel like i'm on top of what i'm working on so let's start with the actual projects left so day 12 of Stitch Mania for me this year is a stitch for Sweet Freedom. This is by Lindy Stitches. I started it last year for uh, President Biden's inauguration and for the inauguration day stitch along. So this one was picked by my friend Carol, who I stitch with here in person in Rhode Island. And here is what I have done on it so far. Uh, the last time I worked on this was up at uh, the farm in New Hampshire back in November. So I haven't had put a lot of work into it, but I think 
once I really get going on this, it's going to stitch up pretty fast. Um, I'm stitching this on 32 count Morning Mist Lugana from Heavenly Creations, which is a dyer that was around in the, in the aughts. I feel like I'm talking about 1900 when I talk about the aughts, but uh, 2000 to 2010 era, I don't, I'm pretty sure she's not doing anything anymore. If she is, I think it's under a new name. Um, but I had had this in my stash for years. Really pretty light blue. Um, honestly, kind of like a a light sky blue. I don't know if it's coming up true to color on the screen. I don't think it is. Anyway, I'm doing this in just random threads from my stash because it's it's one of those pieces that's, you know, can be pretty forgiving. And as I said, that was from my friend Carol. So thank you, Carol. All right, day 13. Another one of the pieces that I was planning on having coming up. Uh, this one is going to be a different take than a lot of my pieces, though. So, by my friend Simberly, who I know through the Teresa Wessler group, or Kimberly, I'm sorry, am I mispronouncing your name? I probably am. Um, is Witch's Wheel. And this is not going to get stitches. This is going to get beads because all of the stitching, with the exception of just a little bit of correction work I need to do, is done. So this is by Glenn in Place. I started this all the way back in 2011. This is one of those pieces that uh, got stalled out due to my son being born, and I was having just, uh, the black was getting to me. Just doing solid black stitching was, it's not my thing. I'm not a like solid color stitcher, generally. Uh, I appreciate that it's necessary on pieces, but not my thing. All right, so mine is done on the called for fabric, which is 32 count solar from Picture This Plus. Make sure I have my this way up arrow done. And this is what it looks like right now. So all of the cross stitching is done. Um, I have a little bit of repair work on this hat over here it's just it's a little bit crooked and if I didn't have to do beads on it I wouldn't care but if I don't correct it the beads are going to sit funny in there so once I get that hat it's just that point of the hat I just need to correct a little bit I can start beading this um, I'm going to be taking this down to my mother's in Florida this week so my plan is I'm gonna do that hat correction over this weekend while I'm down there because it's really not going to be that big of a deal to do and then once I have that done then it's ready to bead my goal is to have this sucker done framed and in our uh, local regional fair the Big E which is held in September so I want to put this thing in the fair this year that is my goal but that is where that is so it'll be my one non-stitching project, technically. We'll see how many beads I can do in a night. Um, and yes, I have found my beads. They are all, I have all of them. They are ready to go. My friend Cynthia asked me if I had those at Stitcher's Hideaway. And yes, I have found the whole set. I'm good to go. <laughs> I do not need to order any like neon yellow beads. Thank goodness, because what else would I do with them after this project? Alrighty, so next project is from my friend Cheryl I. She is somewhat local to me. I generally see her at Celebration of Needlework in May. I unfortunately will not see her there this year since I will be down at that baby shower I mentioned earlier. Um, this is Snowball the Fight by Dragon Dreams. That is the only copy I have of the, the picture. Um, this is a piece I adopted, and so it's not on a fabric that I necessarily would have chosen, but I absolutely love the design and the stitcher had it started. I'm like, yeah, what the heck, I'll do it, you know, I'll just finish it as is. Um, so it's on an unknown fabric. 
I know it's 28 count. So this is what it looks like right now. Kind of an odd color fabric, but I think it's still going to be cute. And I'm doing it in the charted DMCs. Um, this will come up on WIPCO later this year, but it has not been called yet. And this is one of those pieces that I think if I set my mind to it, I really could get this done this year. It's really not that big of a piece. So that is that one. Thank you, Cheryl. Oh, and this was in, if you're trying to track down, I don't think it was ever printed as a chart separately. I could be wrong on that though. But this was in the, let's see what issue of Stitcher's World this is. Of course, the cover on this thing is probably ripped off by now. Uh, it is Stitcher's World, and it is, I, yeah, the cover's been ripped off of this. Um, oh, no, it's not. My bad. Uh, Stitcher's World, January 2002. This is the cover. Ooh, that way. There we go. So if you're looking for that project, that is where I have it from. Um, I do not know whether it was ever published separately as a chart. My guess is it probably wasn't. There's that one. Okay. Day 15 from my fellow moderator on Stitch All the Things, the other Melissa, um, picked my other Wensler. Yes, I have two Wenslers, but actually this is a good one because this is one that I definitely want to finish. It doesn't have that much left to do. And this is one of those projects I wanted to have as a final finish this year. So this is You Were Hatched. And this was a limited edition chart. I bought it the year that it was released, which is why unlike the ones on eBay that are selling for God knows what, mine cost me $4.50. Um, and my copy's a little beat up and no, I'm not giving this up after I stitch it because I know how rare it is and I collect her charts. So, um, anyway, so that is what it looks like done. And mine has all of the dragon work on the center done. See, everything's done. The only thing I need to do are those outer Celtic knot work corners. That's it. So I just need to pull an appropriate blue from stash uh, of an over dye so I can get that nice effect because it is only done in one color. Um, worst comes to worst, I'll just steal it from my denim band sampler because I think that actually might work. And that's it. That's all I got to do. And then finish it as an ornament. So um, I have this on 32 count antique white linen and it is to date in the charted DMCs and like I said whatever I have for the corners will be what I have. It was originally charted for um, Dinky Dyes Fantasy Blues. I might actually have that somewhere. I'll have to see. I know I have something close but anyway it was uh, Dinky Dyes Silk. And I probably will not do the metallic outline on that knot work because it, it really isn't to my style. So, um, and I really don't want to mess with metallics when I don't have to. So, um, yeah, thanks, Melissa. I will get that done. Okay. Day 15 is my newer band sampler from iStitch Designs. You saw the Jade band sampler in my episode, my previous episode. That was last year's sampler. This is this year's sampler. And I was doing great for a while keeping up with it. And I've kind of fallen off, but that's okay because I am not in a rush. So this is what I have done to date. Um, I have this on 28 count banding from, uh, it's a place in the Netherlands and I will link that below. Uh, with a really pretty blue border. I got this a few years ago though, so I don't know if this style of band is still being produced. 
It is a German banding. Um, I'm doing this in a mix of flosses in DMC 312, uh, two hand dyed by Moe's Sale called Embu and Angle. Uh, the Embu is the dark and the Angle is the light blue. And then just to fill in a little bit more because I was worried about how much floss I had, um, I also have gotten the denim color from hand dyed by Rolanda and you and I have used all of it and you cannot all three colors and you cannot see where I've used one and mixed to another they blend perfectly so um, I started this one the first week of January this year with the first release uh, we're about up to I think we're about halfway no we're not that far through probably about like week 12 week 13 I think has been released out of 30. I don't think we're halfway yet. Um, but yeah, it'll be 30 weeks. And just like the Jade Band Sampler, it's just going to go and go and go. You get a, a little bit at a time every week to try to catch up. So I'm just going to continue to press forward and see how much further I can go. So that is that one. Um, all of these I Stitch Design Band Samplers are available the year after they're released as a mystery stitch along um, as one full piece on her website and I will link that below. All right, put that over there. Okay, day 17 is a teeny, 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 tiny piece. This is from one of my fellow New England stitchers, Lee. And this is called the wheelbarrow from the purple thread. It's a teeny tiny piece. It's a pin cushion in a wheelbarrow that is created by the same folks that do those neat little sleds for sled designs. Um, I took, this was a uh, round robin piece from Celebration and Needlework in 2020. It was an online, uh, you know, stitching retreat. Usually it's held every year in New Hampshire in May, um, but obviously in 2020 that wasn't happening. So it went remote. Um, I started this on New Year's Eve along with several other pieces that have come up in this countdown and I barely got anything done. I have a whopping little hook. That said, there's not a lot to this thing for the stitching. So I really am going to try to shoot to get all of the stitching done in the day that this comes up. And given that it is on a Tuesday, um, I'm pretty sure I can do that. I might not get, you know, the whole thing finished and in the wheelbarrow that night, but I think I'll get that stitching done that night. Um, it's on 32 count raw linen and it had DMC kitted in with it. Um, I don't know if this was released separately as a chart after the round robin, but it's a really cute little thing and definitely unique. I'd never seen the wheelbarrow before. So hopefully that'll be a finish, a fully finished object this summer because it, there's not that much to it. I should be able to get to that. So thank you, Lee. Okay, uh, day 18 was by my friend Carrie on Facebook. And this is the Nantucket Sampler by Madero's Needlecraft. Um, this is a piece that I started a long time ago in 2012. I didn't like how it was looking and then I restarted it last year in, for St. Patrick's Day in 2021 because um, the original fabric just was not doing it for me and I think that's one of the reasons I put it aside. I just was not happy with it and I'm so glad that I changed it out because now I'm very happy with how it's looking. So I am doing this on 36 count cream from Legacy Linen. Um, it's being stitched in Sullivan's that match the DMC colors that are in originally charted. And this is what I have done so far. Um, I'm doing this, let's see, am I doing it in two over or one over? Looks like I'm doing it one thread over two. So that's what I have done so far. 
it's a cute little sampler. It's not honestly all that big, but that top that top section of the scene on the with the ship is fully heavily stitched. So once I get past that, it's really not going to be all that bad and I think it's going to move a lot faster until then I get down to the bottom scene with the woman standing on the beach. Um, this was on my whip go list last year. It is going to be on there again this year, but has not been called yet. And uh, this is another one that I'm hoping I can get done this year. So that is Nantucket Sampler. And thank you, Carrie. Okay, the next piece is another one that was from uh, Celebration in Needlework in 2020 with the uh, round robins that happened. And this is from Manny Dudana, who's one of the Italian designers that is becoming very popular recently. And it's simply called the I Love USA set. Um, the picture is really hard to see. Unfortunately, it's very small, but there's basically a little pin here. It's a little chatelaine set. Um, so it's a little pin that has a flag with I Love USA in black that's written across the flag. And then it has a um, little scissor fob or another little pin cushion here. And then a thread winder here that was included in the kit. Really, really cute. Very simple. Not that, you know, something that's supposed to be pretty fast, but a little different style wise. Um, I started this again on New Year's Eve this past year. And the, I have, let's see, I've started the top um, flag pin. So this is what I got done on that so far. Um, I only worked on this on New Year's Eve. I have not worked on it since. So we'll see how far in a day that this will take me. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this was picked by my friend Margaret, who I stitch with here in Rhode Island. Thank you, Margaret. Um, and yeah, this will be another piece that I've been wanting to try to get some smalls done. So awesome, fun, random selection. Okay, the next one was from Carlene on Facebook. And this is the ABCs of Parenting from Lizzie Kate. This is my first ever Lizzie Kate design. I've been stitching how many years and I had never done a Lizzie Kate. Um, I don't know why. So this is the one I'm doing and I am doing it on an old piece of ivory Monaco that I have had in my stash probably 15 years. It's been maybe longer. It's been sitting there forever. Um, this was another one I started on New Year's Eve, so I only have the beginning of the A done, but that A is a lot bigger than I expected it to be, but then again, it is pretty big on the chart here too. So um, I am doing this in some random DMCs that I have in stash. I don't think it's gonna match perfectly with what the chart has. I'm definitely not doing it in the crescent colors that it called for. Uh, just doing it in straight DMCs. So this, like I said, this is a 28 count Ivory Monaco DMC swap colors. Um, yeah, and this was just another one of those New Year's Eve pieces that I did as a frenzy and then just never have been able to get back to. So thank you very much, Carlene, because this is one that I do want to get done, you know, before my son is 18 when I'm done with the childhood section of parenting but I got his birth sampler done before he was out of high school. That, that was an accomplishment. <laughs> okay. We are down to day 21. Uh, this was picked by Kathy A, who I've known for many, many years. I've done a couple of round robins with her. Um, and I was wondering if this would come up and I think Kathy will have a good chuckle when this comes up because she's one of the ones who would appreciate this sort of thing. Day 21 is and they sinned. <laughs> it, it comes out. 
I have not worked on this in months. Um, I originally had planned on every Sunday being a sinning Sunday and I have not done that and I keep telling myself I should because if I don't start doing that this thing is going to take me until I'm about 80 to get done. Uh, but this is And They Sinned. I started this for New Year's Day in 2019 and I am currently on the cloud of doom at the top which if you see here is this here it's kind of hard to see on this photo um, but you get an idea when I open this up it's it's a lot of stitching it is a very very heavy stitching to which I'm sure anyone who stitched this is laughing going yeah wait till you get to that green on the bottom I know but where I'm at this thing has been bogging me down and I think once I get past it I will be golden so here is my copy of and they sinned um, so I am on this big section of cloud that will connect up between these two sections of cloud this is done on 56 count Zweigart um, cream colored Zweigart I am stitching this with the charted gentle arts colors and it is stitched with one thread over two holes um, it looks absolutely fantastic when you look at it it is a little tricky to get started on these tiny holes but once you get a few stitches in your eyes honestly do kind of lock on the hole I do not use a magnifier with this um, but yeah I'm really happy with how this is turning out so far and it is only uh, and they sit as one of those pieces that a lot of people have on their bucket list if they do it on the called for lengths of fabric this thing winds up being like four feet sometimes five feet high mine is going to be 28 inches long um, which will be a heck of a lot cheaper to frame but this is one of those bucket pieces for me as well and I explained the whole history behind this a long time ago I'll put it on Facebook or actually no I'll put this on my blog at some point because I know the blog post on this has probably disappeared into the ether with the rest of my blog so anyway so that's that thank you Kathy uh, for dragging me back into my insanity that honestly I really do want to be in and just keep not finding the time to do so and that'll be on a Saturday it'll be a sinning Saturday <laughs> fitting all right uh, I know this is going to come up at some point this year on my whip go as well so hopefully I'll make some really nice effort on that one this year okay we're up to the final day um, this was another one of my New Year's Eve starts I think I think I'm doing about half of them for uh, Stitch Mania this year which is kind of cool actually I'm, I'm kind of happy I'm getting back to them and putting a little more time in them um, this was picked by my friend Christine who I stitch with quite frequently both in person we go to retreats together uh, we both snark over Facebook together we have a great time together um, this was from the uh, black needle trick-or-treat box this past October in 2021 and this is the absolutely adorable flying lesson from Silver Creek samplers I believe this just was released uh, as a chart at large at Nashville this past year um, but I just love this piece it's just so cute simple cute and anything witchy with me you know I'm, I'm a sucker for it so like I said I started this on December 31st this past year um, it is on the charted fabric which is 18 count hazelwood Ada from fiber on a whim um, and I am doing it with the DMC that was charted and kitted in the trick-or-treat box um, oh I'm putting it sideways here I do not have much done on it because again it was one of those starts on 
New Year's Eve, so I've just started doing the uh, the long broom. That's on the the left of the chart. Um, so I'm hoping to get a nice amount of work done on that. But that's that one. And this is like the softest Ada I've ever felt. Normally I associate Ada fabric with the heavily starched stuff that the, you would get like in those old, um, in the kits from like dimensions and stuff that you're like, oh, it feels like cardboard. This is like soft. It's like feeling linen and uh, even weave soft. I love it. I, I honestly, and I love this color. I would stitch a whole ton of stuff on this color. So thank you, Christine. Very appropriate that you gave me the witchy thing. Um, if I had it started, I probably would have, you know, cheated a little bit with what you picked and put like the cryptid stitch along or whatever, but I haven't started that yet. So, but yay. So that is day 22. That is all of my projects for Stitch Mania this year. Thank you to all of my friends who uh, are contributing to my insanity. Um, I greatly appreciate you, and without you, the insanity would be slightly less fun. So, thank you very much. Okay, so then the question became, how the heck do you organize this stuff? Um, not only for Stitch Mania, but just in general, because I have approximately 50 pieces that are in some sort of progress. Some of them are in timeout. Um, some of them I may never finish. You know, some of them are in a unfinished object or UFO status. Um, but that's it's a lot of projects to keep sorted. So my method to my madness is, and I got to turn around to grab this thing. Um, this is the one that I have actually for Stitch Mania this year. I reorganize it. I keep all of my projects in, well, first off, they're all kept in a basket. So I've got a few different baskets and they are currently in the cabinets that you see right behind me in the lower sections of the cabinets. And every project has its own project bag. Um, I, I get project bags from a number of different sources. These are from my friends Peggy and Roberta at BFF Pouches and Bags. Um, I, I love collecting these. Pardon the cat hair because this was being sat on. Um, but so example, this is Quaker Compass that I showed yesterday. And in here I keep, I don't normally keep needles. For some reason I just have an empty needle thing in here. Don't pay attention to that. But I keep the chart. I keep the fabric. I keep all of the floss. I have floss separate for every single pr project um, for a couple of reasons. One is because it just keeps things organized for me. I know that I have everything I need in a project so I can just grab and go. The other reason is that uh, although it's claimed to be color fast, DMC does have dye lots and they don't always work dye lot to dye lot. There is change between the colors. Browns tend to have a noticeable change between them. Um, but honestly, all of the colors can have a little bit of a change between them. So I want to make sure that the floss I'm using stays correct through that whole piece. Um, so I kit everything up together for each piece. It has its own floss. When I'm done with the piece, any leftover floss goes back into what I call my master pool. I, you know, I have a container that has all the DMC in number order. And if I have duplicates of a certain color on a bobbin or whatnot, it's together. Um, I pull from there first. And then if I'm missing a color from that master pool, then I'll go buy some. Does that mean I have a lot of random floss of the same color hanging around? Yeah, it's true. I do, but I'm also ensured that the floss for that specific project is going to be correct for that project. And I'm not going to run into those dye lot issues. Now that became kind of a unique thing. Actually, it's kind of 
a good thing that I pulled out Quaker Compass because I'm a little worried at how much of the thread works I have for this whole piece. So I'm, I may have to play around with this a little bit um, because Threadworks is notorious for not having dye lots match from one dye lot to the other. So it, it is a good thing to, if you're someone who stitches on a lot of projects, do consider kitting them up by themselves. If you're doing like two or three at a time or, you know, whatever, you probably can get, and you're a fast, especially if you're a fast stitcher. I am not a fast stitcher. If you're a fast stitcher and you can work out a one, you know, central floss pool, awesome. Um, but it is a way to keep yourself organized. And that way I know everything's right here. I never have to pull the floss I need if I'm going away on vacation. I grab a bag, I go. That's it. The only thing I might have to grab are a couple of needles and a pair of scissors and, you know, and whatever, like hoop or whatever I'm using for that piece. Everything else is in here ready to go. So that's how I organize each piece. And I, like I said, I have a, a different, I kind of have grabbed bags from all over the place. I have like these ones from Peggy and Roberta. Um, I bought these off of Etsy. I'll have to look up where I got these ones on Etsy. They're similar, but they're a little bit different sized. I have ye old basic bags from Amazon. Um, some of the, I do keep, if they're not ones that are really recognizable like these, where they're completely individual designs, I do have plastic tabs with the name of the design on them so I can find them easily. Cause of course, you know, these bags all look the same. Um, I also have gone to Target to that, you know, like the little dollar section they have right there in the beginning. And I pull little bags there. They're perfect. These are like the, the UB brand uh, pencil cases. They work great for tiny projects. So, and then of course I get some from Black Needle Society in my boxes, like this wonderful big one from last year's box. So I have a number of different types of bags, um, but every project gets its own bag. Every project has its own kitted floss. Uh, depending on the complexity of the project, for instance, like uh, Egyptian Sampler, it tends to be my Wenzlers that get one of these. I, I have the ye old school floss box, so I can keep all of my uh, bobbins and all of my blends together on bobbins in them. But that's how I keep things organized. And it's nice and easy, and I know where everything is, and I keep this specific basket is like my active basket and then i have a few inexpensive ones that i have um other projects in that aren't in the super active pile and they just kind of get rotated around so that's my method to my madness as far as charts are concerned that's for another day because i'm still working on that <laughs> um but that's it so Thank you for popping back to see the rest of this crazy adventure. Um, I will be, as I mentioned, I'm going to be in Florida for a few days visiting my mom. So I probably won't have another video till the very end of the month or the very beginning of May. But I hope you are having a lovely April and I will see you soon. Take care, everybody. Bye.